Hello, so in this video we're going to look at GRE tunnels. Um, I recently had a, a need to put a GRE tunnel in at work and I thought it would make an interesting video, so here we are. Um, one quick request from me is if you could subscribe if you really like the content, or don't if you don't. Um, uh, but definitely if you hit the like button if, if you know you like it because it really does help and it helps to put the video out there in front of, in front of other people. Um, that would be awesome. So moving on then to the, the whole GRE uh, tunnel, and we can see we've got some GRE traffic coming in now to a GRE zone, which is actually being denied. So I'm going to set up a GRE tunnel between my uh, lab firewall and my perimeter firewall. Uh, so that we can run the traffic through there just for the demonstration purposes and the other side of it's already configured because base well the, the, for the truth it's a PA220 and they are slower than a, an, an aged tortoise and you, I just haven't got the patience you haven't got the patience nobody wants to sit and, and, and sit there whilst that pushes policy so that side of it's been configured already and what we're going to do is we have this desktop, which is my uh, my lab desktop, um, showing awesome website at the minute. Uh, I think so anyway. Um, and this currently is using a default route, and it's being routed through um, and then natted on the uh, on the firewall. So I'll just show you that configuration. So that firewall, that host, sorry, we're seeing at the minute is on ten one hundred. Uh, 102.2, that's the IP address of that. Uh, we can see that it's going out of ETH11 and we could actually add in here as well, we could add the, um, don't want the device, I've added that by accident there, hang on, uh, NAT source IP. So if we add that into the logs, we can see in the logs that it's been NATted behind the external IP address of this particular firewall, which happens to be a 192.168 address because it's in the lab. And, uh, and that's how it's getting through to the other side. Then it hits the, the perimeter firewall, PA220, and goes on its merry way from there. So what we're looking to do is we're looking to remove that connectivity and then push everything up a, a GRE tunnel. So we're going to look at the GRE configuration and then we're going to look at swinging that route across. Okay, so currently if we, if we look at GRE tunnels, so our GRE tunnel is a GRE tunnel to London, which is configured here, we will uh, will be configuring that one, and then there's two. So there's two aspects to that. There's a tunnel interface, which is here. This is where we create our tunnel interface and give it its address, which is the address of the the GRE tunnel as opposed to the address of the interface, and then that all goes together. So let's just get rid of these. which I can't do because it's referenced by that. So we get rid of that. Okay. And then our interfaces and our zones. We'll delete that, get rid of that. Okay, and whilst that's pushing. Okay, so that's, so that's the, the GRE tunnel, so we're, we're doing it from we're doing it from scratch, and there's some very important things to remember, which is a GRE tunnel is made up of the tunnel interface itself, and then we have where the tunnel is, is terminated, um, and the interface of that tunnel is going to be terminated on. So whilst that's doing it, we'll just look at the virtual router. So if we look at the virtual router, our default virtual router is our default route for our, our static routes, which is out to uh, 1.2.1.6.8.0.1, and that's just our, our default route. Um, and we're going to move that to the tunnel that we create. Uh, and we also have a NAT rule as well, um, which we can remove. So we're going to have a NAT rule as well here, which is our internet NAT, which we're going to be able to remove uh, once we've done this. Okay, so let's just see if that's pushed. Okay, so now that's completed and pushed, we can start to configure our, um, our network. Right, so what we have is we have the zones here and we've got our GRE tunnel zone that we're going to use. We've got our internet and our user LAN zone or Chicago LAN, which is what it's now been replaced by, sorry. So we need to first, we need to create our tunnel interface. So our tunnel interface, this is going to be 
the tunnel. So this is going to be our GRE tunnel interface. Okay, and we're going to give it a, uh, we're going to assign it a virtual router because it needs to be part of the routing instance. And we're going to give it a GRE tunnel. Now, and the important thing to, to denote here is this is where our GRE packets are going to land. So if we have, um, if we was to put that on the internet, so if I was to select internet here, like that, then we wouldn't need a security rule for that because that would be handled by the interest zone default, okay? But because we're gonna land it on GRE, um, which is gonna allow us to create a much more granular security policy, uh, we're gonna land it on the GRE tunnel zone and then we'll have to create the policies from the internet to the GRE tunnel zone for the GRE packets, because remember they're encapsulating it. Um, they'll come into there and then anything that needs to go from Chicago LAN to ultimately the internet will go across from Chicago land to GRE tunnel, and then that will be sent up the GRE tunnel. So the other side of our GRE tunnel uh, on the, the PA220, which is ahead of this, is 192.168.14.1 slash 30. So our tunnel is going to be 14.2, okay? And we can afford, we can give it a ping, uh, ping only, so that we can ping across the tunnels if we want to. So now we've got our tunnel and then we wrap that up in our GRE tunnels, which we're gonna create here. So our GRE tunnels, so this is our GRE. Ah, you can't actually use spaces here. Um, to PA220. So the interface is gonna be the interface that is gonna be the, the, the egress interface and what ultimately connects to the, um, the endpoint in question. So we're, our tunnel will effectively land on ETH11. That's where it's gonna come into. And then the IP address is the local IP, that's the IP of that interface. So think of that as the physical interface IP. That can be a VLAN, it can be um, aggregate interface or whatever, but that's gonna be the interface that you're going to use. The peer address is the address of the physical interface on the, uh, on the client side, uh, sorry, on the server side, so on the other side of the, the connection, on the peer, should I say. And then the tunnel that we're gonna use, our tunnel interface that we're gonna use is gonna be tunnel one that we configured previously. The tunnels go down if they're not used, so you have to use to keep traffic to, to bring them back up. Uh, whereas if you keep do the keep alive, that will keep the tunnel up all the time. Uh, not that you can really see a status for the GRE tunnels within the GUI, which is a bit bizarre. Still in this version, you can't see a status for it. Um, but you've got to keep alive there to keep the tunnels up, and then we can do the tunnel failover afterwards. Uh, the copy type of service header speaks for itself. Just copy the type of service header across, and then you've got TTL64 and so on. So now we've, we've created, our, um, created our GRE tunnel. And so effectively now, Everything that we need to actually bring that tunnel up to, to create that tunnel is, uh, exists. So what we're going to do is we are going to, we're just going to commit that and then we're going to just, uh, just ping across the tunnel and make sure that ping works. Okay, so that's now committed, committed uh, successfully. So now if we go to the virtual router, we can see in the virtual router on this side, it's more runtime stats. You can see that we've got a, a route there to, uh, for 192.168.14.0 slash 30, which is on tunnel one. And if we just quickly nip across to the command line, we can do a show tunnel, no, show interface tunnel dot one. And we can see that tunnel is up. We can see the traffic going across it. And if I try and ping that, so I can ping source from the uh, tunnel interface on the Chicago side, dot 14.2. Uh, oh. Okay, and then we can see that we can, we can ping across the tunnel. So now we can ping across a tunnel. We know that that tunnel is up and that tunnel is, is alive and can take the traffic. Um, 
So what we have to do here, because we've, we've landed it on the inside, we have to create a couple of rules. So if we just nip back here, so we can create a, a couple of rules here, which is um, we're going to the LAN, so in an environment where you was changing it from one configuration to another, this is pretty much how it would look. So at the minute we've got our LAN host internet, well they're not going to the internet anymore, so we can adjust that and we can put the GRE. We can remove the internet from there. So now our Chicago LAN going, it goes to GRE tunnel to go out to the internet. Can remove our internet NAT rule, we'll just disable that for the minute, so we can remove that because we don't need it. And then the next thing to do is to swing our route over. So on our default route in here, we can swing our default route over is, and it'll change, well, it usually erases that. But we're gonna go tunnel one, slash zero, and because it's just going up the tunnel, it doesn't really matter, you could put an IP address in there of the other side of the tunnel, but it's gonna send the traffic up the tunnel anyway. So we'll just do none. And go okay. And then we'll commit that. Okay, that's committing now. So there's a couple of warnings here. We need to do an updated video for 11.1, which is what this firewall is, is 11.1. There's a lot of different things. And there's, I've found a few uh, issues as well that there has to be some, some way around them for, but um, that's going to be for a later video, so the, that configuration is committed now. Okay, so we'll go over to the uh, to the desktop, and then we'll just open a browsing window and do a bit of a bit of browsing. Maybe have a bit of a look at that that awesome website again. And well, I mean that's how bad's that. I can't even spell my own uh, my own website. So there we go. We'll just quickly nip there. Can see that that works and then if we come back to the firewall and we go to uh, monitor tab have a look in the monitor tab and we now see traffic whereas it was originally going out to the internet and it was going that way we can see traffic that is going across uh, the Chicago land to the GRE tunnel and being allowed and going out that way um, we can also just go back to our command line uh, so we got a tunnel still up and we're all good so we can route to where we need to get to um, we've got a point to point link now between the, our firewall and the, the upstream firewall and so any hops in between or any leaking of routes in between wouldn't now affect our, our traffic and it would be more secure um, you can create multiple GRE tunnels um, you can uh, run uh, dynamic routing over them um, so, yeah, they're, they're very sort of flexible. Okay, so that's, that's GRE tunnels. That's a quick video on GRE tunnels. Uh, enjoy, and I'll see you in the next video.